Hello and welcome to this Civic Future online event, What is the Civic Future Fellowship? We now have uh, several hundred people on the call, uh, so let's kick off. Thank you to everyone who's on this call for showing an interest in the fellowship and our wider work, it's much appreciated. My name is Jack Hutchison and I am the Programme Director here at Civic Future. That means I'm in charge of the very exciting fellowship programme that we've put together. Uh, and just to let you all know, a video recording of this webinar will be uploaded to our YouTube channel soon after the end of this call. So this call is primarily for those who would like to uh, apply to the fellowship. The information about the fellowship has so far been relatively limited, but today we're excited to finally be able to reveal a little more detail. In terms of a brief agenda for this call, our CEO, Munira Mirza, will provide a short overview of Civic Future itself our objectives and mission, as well as a little bit about our wider work outside of the fellowship. And I'll then present for 15 minutes or so on the fellowship with about 20 minutes left at the end for a Q&A. We may finish uh, before eight o'clock, we might finish on the hour. I think either way, we'll just keep going until we've run out of either questions or time. If you would like to ask a question, please email it to info at civicfuture.org uh, and someone in our team will be keeping an eye on that inbox and then Manir and I will be able to respond once we've uh, finished up. Uh, so Manira, over to you. Great, um, thanks very much, Jack. And uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, as Jack says, I'll spend a few minutes just talking about Civic Future uh, and the background to the organization. Uh, and, and then I'll hand back over to Jack to talk about the fellowship more specifically. So uh, Civic Future is uh, relatively new. We launched uh, last November and uh, we're a new organization set up to identify and recruit talented people into public life. Uh, we are not for profit and we're non-party political, but we're grounded in the values of liberal democracy. And I uh, set up uh, Civic Future because I've worked in government, national and regional government, for around 15 years. And uh, most recently in number 10 as the head of the policy unit. And I've come to believe that if we want to solve the big challenges, address the, the problems that face the UK and, and liberal democracies more generally, then we have to do much better as a country to attract talented people into public life, but also to prepare them better uh, for thinking about the big challenges that they will be working on and uh, to provide the kind of training and knowledge that will help them in their career. Uh, I know that um, for a lot of people, there's cynicism about working in public life. There's a great deal of cynicism about Westminster politics, about civil service, about the media uh, around politics and, and, and public service. But it's our view that working in public life is one of the most rewarding things you can do. Uh, it's a, a very powerful way to improve society. And uh, I'm very passionate about encouraging more people to consider it. Saying that, we also believe that there's a huge amount in public life that's not working. Many of our institutions, civil service, government, Westminster politics, uh, it's often very short-termist, can be quite risk-averse, there's often too much bureaucracy, uh, and uh, there's often a great deal of groupthink. We want, we want more uh, uh, diversity of opinion and more healthy discussion and debate. So um, we think that there are many things that, that we need to fix uh, in our public life, and, and the key to that is, and key to making our political culture work better, is to bring new people in, to bring in fresh talent and fresh ideas. And uh, I think from, from my own experience and having talked to lots of people who've worked in government, uh, there are very few opportunities really to take a step back, to think about the big trends, the big uh, changes that are happening in the world today and how they impact on uh, British politics and, and British public institutions. So from you know, thinking deeply about economic questions, the, the issue of economic stagnation, the impact of financial crash over the last 10, 15 years, thinking about the rise of China and global conflicts, the future of technology and the risks and opportunities around that, 
right through to the debates that, that we see all the time about rights and freedom and democracy. And we think it's very important that people have a chance in public life to take a step back and, and think deeply about those kinds of issues. And often it's just not possible. Um, and one of the reasons I set up Civic Future is just try and create that opportunity and that space uh, for people uh, so that they, they do have the opportunity to, to think about those questions and to develop professionally and develop the kinds of skills and, and training they need to, to operate um, effectively. As well as thinking about contemporary policy challenges, we're also unashamedly uh, keen on, on people reading and uh, thinking about the big ideas that have underpinned liberal democracy. Uh, often what distinguishes great leaders in history is the fact that they've had a chance to read and, and to talk with other people, with great thinkers, uh, to think about history, philosophy, literature. And uh, Jack will talk uh, more about the curriculum for the fellowship, but we think it's very important that people have a chance to read and to, to look at what uh, great thinkers of the past as well as the present have said about many of the policy challenges um, that we're experiencing today uh, and that there's a great deal of wisdom and, and knowledge there um, and, and sometimes I'm sure you will all have experienced this but the distraction of social media and emails makes it difficult to do that so hopefully you'll um, you'll hear uh, Jack talking about the curriculum and, and hopefully some of you will be excited about about what we're offering. Um, we should be quite upfront and explain that we're not offering through the fellowship a formal qualification and the reason for that is that we're very keen to attract applications from people who are interested really genuinely interested in their own learning and their own development rather than people who are looking for another line on their cv uh, and obviously we want people who go on the fellowship and who are involved in civic future to have great careers and be successful but we're really, really keen to get people who are motivated by public service and that that's their primary reason um, to, to come on board and be part of, part of our network and our community. As I said before, we're not party political uh, and our team and our advisory council are drawn from different political traditions and non and different professional sectors. Um, you can see all our advisory council members on our website. Um, but you, you, you'll see names that hopefully you may have heard of some of them. Uh, the British philosopher John Gray uh, is on there, along with the US economist Tyler Cohen. Um, we have a Labour peer, Maurice Glassman, as well as ex-ministers like David Laws, who is a, a Liberal Democrat minister um, in the coalition. We have writers and thinkers. Uh, Saffron Wang, who um, is, was a software engineer at DeepMind, is, is now a, a great writer. Uh, we have the ex-Bank of England chief economist, Andy Holday. So a whole range of people, very eclectic, but all of them passionate about public life. And hopefully all of them in some way or other will be involved in the fellowship, advising on the content. Some of them might be teaching or lecturing uh, uh, on, the, on the courses that we're, we're delivering. So hopefully you'll have a chance if you apply for the fellowship and are successful um, to engage with them as well. Um, as well as the fellowship, and I, I hope that after listening to Jack, you'll be excited and interested to apply, but if you think that it's not for you for any reason, um, don't worry, we're doing lots of other things uh, that, that hopefully will be um, suitable. Uh, so we'll have public events program. Uh, we had a, a fantastic launch event in November with Tyler Cohen. Uh, we had about 400 people in the auditorium at King's College London. And we'll be doing more events like that, looking at both the big challenges facing liberal democracy and, and, and many of the big questions to the geopolitics and the economy, but also looking at quite practical policy issues, whether it's health and social care or uh, uh, crypto and the, the future of uh, finance. There might be a whole range of different things that we're looking at in relation to how government works. And, We'll also offer specific training and workshops uh, for people already in public life or, or for people who are looking for specific um, uh, advice on, on how to how to enter um, uh, different areas. And we'll also be um, offering events and, and meetings and, and, and workshops for people who are interested in, in a more senior level. Uh, possibly non-executive roles in public bodies. So um, we're trying to find ways of engaging people who are at different stages of their career and different 
professional expertise and interests. Uh, and I hope that um, if not through the fellowship, there'll be other ways in which you can uh, keep in touch with us. Please, if you haven't already, uh, sign up to our newsletter where you'll get updates on all our events and our programmes. And of course, you know our email address. So um, if you've got suggestions or, or things that you want to tell us about, then please do get in touch. Um, so I think now I'll hand back over to Jack, but I'll be around for the rest of the session to answer questions as well. Real, thanks, Manira. Uh, so the subject subject of this event is what is the Civic Future Fellowship? And what I want to do over the next 10, 15 minutes or so is answer that question in a little more detail than we have been able to do so far. The fellowship is uh, Civic Future's flagship program. As Manira says, we want this to be the most prestigious pipeline into British public life that we have in the UK. Um, this is a model that we've borrowed and adapted from uh, very successful schemes on the continent, particularly in Germany and France, but also from the US. Um, and in fact, in many instances, we have people from those very successful schemes advising uh, our own fellowship here in the UK in terms of what it can look like, but also the great benefits that it can bring to those participating. But before I start, let me give an overview of what we're trying to build here with the fellowship program, the sort of um, guiding philosophy behind much of our thinking. What we really want to do is bring together a group of really mission-driven individuals. Um, this is not really a sort of university experience. We want people driven uh, specifically by the need to see the country run in a better um, and more effective way. We want to find people, um, in other words, for whom politics will be their vocation. And we do believe unashamedly in formation and learning. So that means we think people working in politics, media, culture, institutions, what we're broadly calling public life, should be engaging with complicated ideas in philosophy, history, political theory, uh, science and technology, geopolitics, arts, whatever it might be. In our experience, people in politics have um, very little time and opportunity for that sort of deep thinking. So in order to counter that, um, I suppose our course, our program will be uh, unashamedly demanding. Um, if you're accepted as a fellow, uh, you'll have your thoughts challenged, your ideas contested. Um, but we're not just looking for people with PhDs. We're not just looking for people with loads of experience uh, working with MPs or, or with government. Some of our fellows, for example, won't have been to university at all, while others uh, might have multiple postgraduate degrees. The point is that each will be intellectually curious open to new ideas. Uh, we want surprising and, and heterodox thinkers. Um, I suppose in terms of the contemporary writers you'll be reading, they'll likely be from all sorts of political traditions. Maybe you'll read uh, Louise Perry on gender, Samo Buya on great power conflict, um, Roger Scruton on tradition, Zizek on ideology, Adam Tooze on economic de decline. Um, whatever it might be, or not to mention, of course, you know, classic texts of philosophy, history, science, uh, and art. But most importantly, you'll be excited to learn both the theory, but also the practice uh, of good politics. So we should have a deck uh, here for you to uh, take a look at, if we can bring that up. Great. Uh, so what exactly is the fellowship and who is it for? The fellowship is a one year foundational program, which will equip fellows with the knowledge, skills and support needed to become great public leaders. Uh, as I say, fellows may already be working in politics or public life um, or will aspire to pursue a public role after the end of the program. And that's quite important. They'll be in early to mid career which corresponds to an age range, I suppose, of early 20s to late 30s, but that's not really set in stone. Um, one thing they'll all have in common is, as I say, this desire to enter public life in order to improve it. Um, the programme is designed to be conducted alongside a full-time full job. Um, so the course is also free of charge. Um, it's really important that this isn't an educational transaction. Uh, instead, we want to... Uh, identify the most talented young youngish people 
uh, who want to enter into public life and to help them to get there. Um, in fact, it's not just free, but actually we'll provide a small stipend, but that will be used to you know, cover the purchase of books, occasional travel, um, and there'll be some costs as well, which we can cover directly. Um, for our first year, we have up to 12 places available. So it is very selective. Um, the applications will open in February, and I'll tell you uh, a little bit more about the application process towards the end of this talk. Um, the purpose of the programme is straightforward, and that is to prepare fellows for public leadership. Um, we, we really do want to find the next generation of highly talented public servants, whether that be those who want to work in the civil service, as advisors, as MPs, in the media, you know, in adjacent fields like GovTech or NGOs, whatever it might be. If you go to the next slide. Um, so what does that look like in practice? Um, it looks quite similar to an academic programme, but with practical skills learning uh, built in throughout. There will be three 10-week terms running from September 2023 to June 2024. Those terms will feature one evening session each week, likely on Wednesday evening, lasting for about 90 minutes to two hours. In those sessions, you will be discussing the most important moral, technological uh, and governance issues of our time, uh, led by some of the country's leading academics and thinkers. Um, many of those session leaders will be academics at top universities, including Oxford, Cambridge, various Red Brick universities. Others will be uh, public intellectuals, so the sort of well-known people that you might follow on Twitter in the UK, the US, um, and around the world. Some of the sessions will be in classic seminar format, like a university. Others will be in a debate style, lecture, or something else entirely. Importantly, though, the sessions will all be highly um, participatory. So there'll be reading set for each week, sometimes video, maybe podcast too, something to listen to. The sessions themselves will usually then be an exploration of that material. So everyone involved participating in a really high level discussion. Um, really, really importantly, we are not just looking for people with experience of all that material already. Um, we'll be covering lots of bases over the course of the year, philosophy, geopolitics, public policy. Some people who get onto the program will have background in that, but some people won't. Um, what we're looking for is raw talent, raw curiosity, uh, people driven by a mission to run the country in a better way. So if we go to the next slide, uh, the content. So. There'll be three terms, as I said, with each term focusing on a particular topic or theme. So the first term running from September to December of this year will be titled Liberalism and its Critics. That's where we'll be asking big philosophical questions. What is liberalism? What is democracy? What is freedom? Uh, what is the difference between progressive and conservative forms of liberalism? What are the ideologies on left and right that are rising up to challenge it? Um, We'll also be diving back into those important thinkers like Machiavelli, Hobbes, Locke, Isaiah Berlin, John Rawls, Christopher Lash, uh, right up to Patrick Deneen on whether and how liberalism uh, might have failed. But that will always be grounded in practical questions about things like religious freedom, meritocracy, uh, whether morality has any place in policymaking. So that's the first term, a lot of it focused on uh, the philosophy and I suppose the theory. The second term, is nations in the world. And that's our term for uh, geopolitics and foreign policy. So what is the place of the nation state in the modern world? How does that relate to globalization, to ethnic conflict, to oil in the Middle East, uh, minerals in West Africa, uh, semiconductor factories in Angui province, whatever it is. Um, British politics is famously poor at looking beyond itself, unless of course it's following the politics of the uh, United States, but what about everywhere else? And what is the actual history of those complex modern debates rather than the version provided either by social media uh, or newspaper headlines? So this is the term where we'll get into some of the most interesting debates in 21st century global politics about empires, about borders, about global capitalism um, and conflict intervention. And this term as well will also feature outside experts 
coming in to explain more about key regions of the globe, former diplomats uh, and intelligence officials and war reporters. You know, what do they have to say about the regions of the world that they worked in? The third term is Britain, state and institutions. Um, in recent years, there's been a lot of criticism of how government works, about slow growth or low investment or a general lack of long-term thinking, a sense of stagnation and stuckness, as we called it in our uh, inaugural event back in uh, November. The alarming fact, obviously, that I think quite a few people know now that in 12 years' time, Britain's on track to be poorer than Poland. So in this term, we'll be looking at areas and problems that both major parties um, have identified as serious issues which haven't yet been fixed housing and planning, NHS reform, technical education, uh, science and technology investment. What are the barriers preventing reform in those areas? Um, and we'll look at debates in economics as well to reasons for the rapid industrialization of Victorian Britain to contemporary progress studies. We'll also feature in this term sessions with former senior politicians, stories from the inside about government reform, about electoral victory, uh, loss and miscalculation. As well as those three terms, we'll be running two residential weekends during the year. The first will be in September, likely focusing on extreme risk, future technologies uh, and the long term future. People on this call might be familiar with some of that thinking already. Uh, the threat of nuclear war, pandemic and disease, but also things like general artificial intelligence. Um, and we'll have experts working in these areas. Uh, coming in to explain whether and how we should be thinking about them. The second residential will be held in December, uh, and we've called that How to Build, and that will focus on really practical skills. Um, we want to ensure that our fellows don't just have uh, this theoretical knowledge, they also need practical experience. So we'll be teaching public speaking skills, communication, uh, how to manage up and down, as well as skills for uh, senior leaders, how to pull together and motivate high performance teams in under pressure situations. And those skills will be used during two case study away days, policy simulation challenges, uh, which take place over the course of an entire Saturday. So we'll likely run one on uh, public sector and one military case study, uh, posing questions such as how would you fare uh, in a leadership position, having to make snap decisions when say, a hospital has no more beds left, um, or a military compound is about to be overrun by hostile forces. So training essentially in very practical and urgent decision making. And finally, fellows will also take part in a paid for overseas trip during the year, uh, seeing up close how an entirely different country works, its state, its governance, its society, and its culture. Um, what lessons can be learned for governing Britain in the 21st century? So what we're doing with these sessions is combining theory uh, and practice, providing the uh, necessary intellectual foundations, um, as well as the practical skills to see them implemented. Um, now, to some that might sound daunting, there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of practical work, uh, high level discussion in the evening on a regular basis, all alongside what may well be a pretty busy full time job. Um, but we've created this course because we believe it's absolutely vital that our public leaders have a deep understanding of the world, of Britain's place in it, as well as the major policy challenges uh, facing British governments. Um, and this is also something that will be with you for life. It's supposed to be an extraordinary learning experience uh, with a highly talented cohort of fellows. Um, the people you'll be learning alongside will also be future leaders of the country in public life. So we want Civic Future to be, and the Civic Future Fellowship, to be the kind of place where the tradition of learning and formation uh, meets the future of public policy. So think the future of government underpinned by a commitment to learning, discussing, uh, and gaining practical skills. So if we go to the next slide. Great. So briefly on the application process, the application process will open next month. So if you would like to be notified about the opening of the application process, make sure you've signed up to the Civic Future newsletter on our website, civicfuture.org. The application process will run in two stages. 
Firstly, there is a written application stage in which you'll have a number of questions to complete and submit on our Civic Future online form. Um, that written stage will be open for six weeks before the submission window closes. Um, in this stage, uh, we're, we're not that interested in what's on your CV, whether you went to university or which university you went to. What we're interested in is how you think and what you're thinking about. Um, so it's a, a very open process. Um, and we've we've written the questions in a way which uh, should be fun and interesting for us to read, but also fun and interesting for you to write. Uh, the top applications from that stage uh, will be invited to interview. Those interviews will take place in May. We'll then select a final up to 12 fellows. Um, and when I say we actually we will be using an independent assessment board in the application process, uh, people uh, who are senior figures from academia policy and other relevant sectors. The final uh, decisions will then be made in June. Um, so as I say, uh, up to 12 fellows. So we do expect the application process to be quite competitive. Uh, we can end the deck there. Um, all right, finally, I'd like to draw attention to an important part of the programme, which is the mentorship opportunities. Um, so at the end of the programme, uh, fellows will be paired up with a senior mentor already working in public life. That person will become their mentor for around a year, advising them on their career and employment, the decisions that they can make, um, suggesting perhaps directions they might want to follow, opportunities that they might want to take. That will be a really valuable aspect of this experience. We want to make sure that our fellows don't just have a really thorough learning experience, um, but that we're in a position to main con maintain contact with them afterwards and support them. So that in around 15 minutes or so was uh, the answer to the question, what is the Civic Future Fellowship? Uh, I'm sure you have lots of, ex of interesting questions. Um, as I said at the beginning, do send those over to info at civicfuture.org. And as soon as they start coming in, uh, Manira and I will be able to respond. Uh, as I said, we'll keep going until we either run out of time or run out of questions. Um, whilst you're writing them, I'll, I'll also very quickly say, um, if these are the issues that you're thinking about and the program intrigues you, um, but for whatever reason, you won't be able to apply this year, maybe because of work commitments or location, or, you know, you think you definitely don't fit the fellows profile, um, then please do get in touch anyway. There'll be lots of other ways to be involved in our work uh, across our non-fellowship program offers, which Manira outlined at the beginning, public events, various networking opportunities and other things like that. Uh, great. Right, so we have a couple of questions. Um, here is one to start us off. Uh, I think we may have answered this, but we can we can uh, return to it. Is the program more for people with an allegiance to one particular political party? Uh, no, very importantly, no. We are non-party political. Uh, so we have people on our advisory board from all three major parties, Labour, Conservatives, Lib Dems. Um, the staff team within Civic Future also has people from all sorts of political traditions. Um, our aim is not to work with people from any particular party. Um, instead, we want to train the next generation uh, of effective uh, public servants and people in public life. Um, I would say that we are committed to certain ideas which we think are important. Um, I suppose a broadly understood liberal tradition, including some of the critics of that liberal tradition that some people might call post-liberal. Um, valuing basic freedoms of association, of speech, thinking trust in a society is important, democracy, um, a market-based economic approach. Um, but again, I think, uh, and we think that these are ideas to which all the major parties are committed. So in that sense, the fellows we're trying to pull together will be a um, properly ecumenical group. Um, but of course, many many people won't have any allegiance to a particular party at all. Um, they likely won't be, I suppose, apolitical, but maybe traditional party politics 
doesn't do that much for them. And I think that's completely understandable. Um, we're not just looking for people um, who uh, have their heads in Westminster all the time or are obsessed with, you know, who's being briefed against in cabinet and all that sort of stuff. I think that's part of the uh, the rigmarole, the uh, over focus on SW1 that's part of the, the, the problem that Manira mentioned earlier um, and that we're trying to, to move away from. Um, I suppose being interested in, in that is absolutely fine, but of course it, it shouldn't be your, your sole interest. Uh, great. Okay, second question here. Manira, this might be one for you. Um, what is the expected outcome of the programme for fellows? Will they be expected to pursue a career in public life after completing the programme, or can they go into any field with the skills they've learned? Okay, so um, it's a good question. Uh, we would very much like people on the fellowship to go into public life, but we define it quite broadly. So that might be formal politics. Lots of people uh, might apply who are interested in becoming a politician uh, for, for any political party, um, but also people who are interested in uh, working at senior levels in government and civil service, or who might want to be special advisors, uh, but also people who are have a career or interest in a career in the media or becoming a public intellectual or leading a major NGO or campaign group. So we think of public life in a very broad sense, but people who will make a contribution, who will influence public debate and discussion, who will have an influence on policy. There are some areas of business and technology and science where there is a public dimension to it. Um, we're hoping that um, some of the people that we attract into our programmes, either through the fellowship or other events, might be people who have never worked in public life, never taken on a public role. And some of them might be people already doing work in institutions or in the civil service, but who would like to think about their future career and uh, strengthen their own development. So um, we're, we're very keen to... Um, attract a wide pool of applicants, but also we're not totally dogmatic about how you go and take what you've learned and where you go on to. The one thing we do want and we ask is that people remain engaged in our community because the network is a really powerful thing. And knowing people, people that you've been this very intensive program with over the years that you become friends with, hopefully, um, is a is we think would be a great um, legacy of, of of, of this this fellowship. Hopefully that answers your question. Great. Uh, okay, another one. Can we provide a bit more information about the uh, speakers, tutors, teachers on the program? Uh, yes. So many of the tutors we have currently signed up uh, are teaching at top universities. So Oxford, Cambridge and Red Bricks, places like that, uh, as I said. They will always be subject area specialists, meaning that whatever topic you're learning about, these may well be the most qualified people uh, in the country to teach it. Uh, apart from the uh, academic tutors, many sessions will also be led by former practitioners, uh, whether senior civil servants, diplomats, frontline politicians, whatever it might be, probably former politicians, but will also include um, what we're calling public intellectuals. So, you know, writers, columnists, people you might know from a corner of political Twitter. Um, and we're bringing together as wide an array of these people as possible to lead the sessions uh, so that there's a, a great variety, both in who's teaching, but also in, I suppose, the format when you arrive on, a, on an evening. Um, and they themselves will be, be a pretty uh, wide ranging bunch of people. Um, so the academics or Public intellectuals will be, you know, economists, philosophers, public policy experts, culture experts, artists, whatever, all reflecting um, the wide variety of content uh, provided on the programme. Joe answers your question. Um, one for Manira. Um, are there any work placements or internships offered for fellows? Yeah, so um, we we would like to um, we would like to offer the, the for some fellows the chance to do work 
experience or work placements for the duration of the fellowship. Um, we probably can't offer for every single fellow because we expect that, that lots of people will already be in full-time work. Um, but we would like to be able to arrange placements in suitable organisations. And that might be particularly helpful for people who are not based in London, but would need to live in London or be able to come into London regularly in order to participate because the seminars will be in person. So that's just one way that we tr we're trying to ensure that people have access um, to the programme. And we can provide a bit more detail about those work placements through the application process and, and, and as people apply. And these, uh, sorry, and I should add, those would be paid work placements. So we would try and cover costs yeah. for people uh, to, to enable their participation. Real. Uh, a couple more questions. Can you provide more information about the diversity of the fellow cohort? Are there any efforts made uh, to ensure it's representative of different backgrounds? Um, yes, so we want to have as broad a base as possible for fellows um, with a diverse range of uh, experiences and backgrounds. Um, it's very important to us that we're not just searching for very talented individuals, but also individuals that work together as a cohort. Um, that means looking for people uh, from all kinds of backgrounds and skills. As we said, some may not have gone to university, others may have PhDs, postgrad degrees, uh, some may have worked in government before, others won't have done. Um, but also we should recognise that traditional uh, talent spotting has tended to undervalue certain groups of people, usually women or those from uh, working class backgrounds or ethnic minority backgrounds. Um, but we most have most of all want to ensure uh, that we have uh, a certain level of diversity in those areas because we want people to be thinking in interesting, uh, diverse ways. Um, so the point is getting people with different opinions into a room and having a full um, and deeply engaged discussion. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Muneer, if you don't have anything else to add to that, I can go to the next question. Uh, uh what is civic futures non-profit status how is the program funded that's probably one for you Manira. so we have uh several philanthropic backers and we're currently applying for charity status uh and we'll continue fundraising um very important to just note that we're not seeking funding from government we want to remain independent uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, as Jack said, we are not charging people to go on the fellowship. And in fact, we um, are able to cover some costs and through a small stipend. Real, thank you. Um, someone asks here, would it be possible to pursue the fellowship alongside a demanding job? Uh, yes, it would be, but of course you have to make, be able to make time for it. Um, so the uh, the sessions will be on a weekday evening, as I said, probably a Wednesday. They will start, you know, likely about uh, seven o'clock. So hopefully it's a time where people can have finished work um, and then they can get to uh, a location which will likely be in Westminster. Um, but as we've said, you know, there are huge benefits to taking part in the programme. Um, and so what we Ideally, hope is that people will be able to make time, even if they do have a busy job, which we appreciate, um, to be able to get along to the sessions, to be able to do the reading, to come to the residential weekends, and also uh, make time for the overseas trip as well. Uh, great. Uh, can you say a bit more about the residential events and seminars? What is the expected time commitment? Um, how do they fit into the overall structure? Quite a few questions there. Um, I suppose some of which I've just answered, but uh, so there'll be two major weekend residentials over the course of the year, one in September and the other in December. And there'll also be an overseas trip. Um, the weekend residentials, I should say, will be held in locations outside of London. As I say, 
there's only two weekend residentials in the year and they'll start on Friday late afternoons, end on Sunday mornings. Um, all fellows would be expected if they can to attend those and arrange their work commitments in advance um, to allow that to happen because they will be an important part of the programme itself. Um, I should say that those weekend residentials are important, not just because of the content, but also because of the team building between fellows, which I've mentioned and Minera has mentioned, but that's a really important aspect of the course. Um, that's where you'll be able to uh, stay overnight for a couple of nights, getting to know people in a, in a more informal setting. So those weekend residentials are really only um, a couple of weekends a year. Okay, great. Another question. Is the programme certified or accredited in any way? Will fellows earn a degree? Manira, do you want to take that one? So we're not, we're not formally accredited like a university. Um, and, uh, but we will have uh, opportunities for fellows to, you know, to, to write and to uh, reflect on what they've learned throughout the, the course of the programme. Um, and uh, as I said earlier, we're, we're very keen to attract people who are genuinely motivated by the content and learning. Um, if you are keen to get accreditation or a certificate, there are lots of great university courses out there that can offer that. Um, but this is probably you know, not the right thing for you. Um, however, saying that we will obviously show some way, we'll have some way of recognizing the fact that people have gone through the program, it will be something you can put on your CV, um, but we will be uh, offering traditional or conventional degree awards uh, in the way that a university would. And this is fairly uh, common uh, and uh, a common model in other countries. Um, for, for various reasons, the UK has quite a university dominated system when it comes to uh, education and politics, but there are lots of schemes in, in other parts of the world where uh, a formal certificate or a formal degree award is, is not the outcome or the end point of, of the programme. Brill, thank you. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I should add, um, obviously we, we expect um, Civic Futures to become a prestigious brand and we hope that in the future as people graduate, as it were, from the programme, that it's something they're very proud of and they can talk about and it becomes recognised as a as a high quality experience. So certainly there's um, there will be value to being part of it. Brill. Um, a career, uh, a question rather about the uh, non-fellowship stuff here. So Manira, you might want to answer this one as well. Um, if I apply because I'd like to pursue a career in public life, but I don't get a place on the fellowship, uh, is there any other way that I can be part of Civic Futures work? Yeah, definitely. So, um, uh, as I said, we'll have public events program uh, where anyone can come along. Um, uh, and that might be uh, in partnership with different organisations like universities or um, you know, we may um, and hopefully do um, events outside London and the South East because we're very keen to have a uh, national reach. Uh, we'll also organise uh, some invite only events and dinners. We have an annual conference that we will do each summer, which will be on a particularly big topic uh, that, uh, that we think is important for, for people in public life to understand. We'll announce details of our annual conference, uh, uh, hopefully um, very soon. Uh, so that people um, uh, will be aware of that. Um, and then uh, we'll have uh, a number of training workshops for people already in public life, the, the, the people who are going into formal politics, uh, people who are um, already working in institutions or working in government, and we'll release more details of that over time. So yes, there are other ways to be involved. And, and in future years, we will offer other kinds of fellowship programme, which are shorter and more specialized in particular areas. Um, so yes, over time we'll have a, a program which hopefully will be uh, interesting and a chance to engage even if the fellowship is not right for you. Great, so I'm gonna chuck a couple of more questions your way, Manira, actually. Um, uh, 
would it be possible for people based outside London to participate in the programme and receive help with travel costs? Yeah, so if if um, if you mean people living outside London who travel in just for the seminars, um, we can look at those applications and we can try and help with travel costs. Obviously, it slightly depends on um, where you're coming in from. But I think the main thing to stress at this point is try not to let practical issues of travel and accommodation be a barrier to applying. Um, we're just very keen to hear from talented people. So um, we will do what we can to make it easy to overcome a lot of those practical issues. We can't promise to do everything that that, um, that people need, but we will try and do um, as much as we can. Um, and obviously you can email in about specific concerns, but there'll be a chance through the application to set out your circumstances if, if needed. Great. Um, here's one. Are the uh, fellowship seminar fellowship seminars all in person or might some be online too? I think we basically answered that, but the fellowship seminars will all be in person. Um, so it may be that a couple of times we zoom in, you know, an expert to give a lecture if they're based outside of the UK, but all fellows will have to be in the same room together. Um, we think that's very important. Part of the purpose of the fellowship is not just for individuals to have a great learning experience, um, but for all the, the cohort, the fellows together to gel, to work together as a group, to get to know each other. And that's best done when you're um, in a room with other people, uh, having proper conversation in real life, uh, real social interaction. Um, so as Manira says, we appreciate some people um, may not live in London, um, but we can potentially arrange internships for some people, look at travel costs, all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, certainly don't let that be a, a barrier for, for your applying. Um, can you say a bit more about the how to build sessions, uh, including the leadership training on offer? I'll take that one. Um, yes, yeah, so the how to build programs are really about how you make effective and efficient organizations. Uh, and that always starts with individuals uh, becoming eff effective and, and efficient yourself. So as such, what we want to do is provide a program about both uh, how individuals can become more effective in the way they work, um, as well as you know how they can make changes around them in processes, ways of working, team design, objectives, and things like that. Um, building um, mission-oriented, it's been called, uh, high-performing teams is really quite difficult. Um, they arise in, in specific situations, uh, compromise certain types of individuals, comprise rather certain types of individuals. Um, so we'll go into all of that um, um, and why that's so important for getting things done um, in government. I mean, I think that this thinking is is quite popular in the uh, private sector, but but less so in government at the moment. Um, and there'll also be extensive communications workshops, and that's really important in politics. Um, so everything from writing advice, uh, from what might seem the most basic, how to argue well for something in a single page, um, to stuff that's a bit more difficult, including speech writing, giving a speech, speaking in front of an audience, etc. Um, as well as, I suppose, some of the things that people find hard, such as giving negative feedback um, and uh, uh, managing one-to-one. -one. Um, we'll also, within that, include uh, sessions on integrity, character building, uh, taking responsibility in public life. Um, it's, it's certainly our belief that being in public life is, uh, is a vocation. And as such, people in public life should hold themselves to high standards. So we'll hold wide ranging, wide ranging discussions as well about what that means. So I hope that answers that. Um, let's have a look. Uh, is it possible to pass, fail, or be asked to leave the program once already on board? Uh, I can answer that one. Um, there's no there's no kind of big final exam as it were at the end of the um uh, at the end of the program we're not going to be setting people final exams or or be stamping a big pass or fail mark um on their um 
uh, kind of graduation certificate or, or, or not graduation certificate. Um, what instead we would uh, hope is that people uh, get a lot from the content of the programme itself. Um, and that it's not necessarily the kind of final accreditation, but it's the experience itself, which is um, which is valuable and useful. Um, obviously, if someone arrives on the programme and they're um, just not doing any of the reading and they don't really want to be there, then of course, yes, we might look at um, you know, uh, ask, asking that person whether they actually want to be part of the experience, but we don't really foresee that uh, particularly being a problem. Um, so really, it's just about, you know, what you're putting into it and the, the content you're experiencing, both in the seminars, the weekend residentials and all of that. Um, okay. Let's have a look, see if there's any more questions. Uh, Manira, maybe one for you. Uh, what happens at the end of the programme? Does the relationship formally end or can participants maintain a relationship with their mentor and civic future? I think you've kind of answered that, but you could, you could do it again. Yeah, I mean, we see this as um, the beginning of a relationship. Um, as, uh, you know, as people go through the programme, we will obviously get to know the fellows and we'll get to know fellows' interests. Uh, we'll talk to them about their future career. We ourselves are very well networked. We know lots of people who work in public institutions, in government and so on. And hopefully over time that network will grow. It won't be just about who we know, it will be about who other alumni of the programme know. Um, and um, so we hope that people continue to stay part of the network, that in the future they themselves might mentor fellows in, in future years. So definitely we're building a community of people who are passionate about public life and um, you know, as well as the formal mentor relationship. Hopefully people will get a chance to meet, you know, great thinkers and other you know, people in politics that they can also um, have conversations with. So it's, it's definitely not just a one year, um, a one year program. Although, of course, you know, there's no obligation, there's no compulsion in this. If people decide after a year they want to go and move to a different country or they just, you know, they they they've. Um, uh, they decided that they want to, you know, move away from from ours. Then, you know, we can't obviously force people to stay, but we hope that people will find the whole experience enriching and, and want to remain involved. Uh, okay, Brill. Uh, I think there's just a couple more questions. Um, quick one: Can you please advise the cost involved in the residential weekends and Easter trip? Uh, there is no cost. That's really important. Um, so the um, the costs of, of the residential weekend itself we'll be covering. Um, we can cover some of the travel as well to uh, the uh, weekend residentials, as well as that overseas trip as well. That's cost covered by us. We really importantly don't want the relationship between fellows and civic future to be transactional in any way. Um, it's um, what we want to do is to um, bring fellows on uh, purely for the content that they're learning and the practical skills that they're gaining. Um, it's not uh, it's not supposed to be a sort of market transaction where you're purchasing something from us. Um, that's certainly not how we see it, and it shouldn't be how you see it either. Um, okay, this might have to be the last question as we're getting close to the end. Um, maybe one for you, Manira. Why are there only 12 places available? Would you like to expand the first year to offer more places? Oh, sorry, would you like to expand after the first year to, to offer more places? Uh, so our, our fellowship program will always be relatively small um, for the reasons that, that Jack has outlined in that to have a really great experience and to make sure that everybody can participate well in the discussions and in the group, that it, it has to be probably limited to um, uh, that size. Um, and you know, each year it will depend on the kinds of applicants we get and, and how much we can flex it. But but probably we'll always keep it roughly around that sort of that, that smallish level. Saying that, we will have uh, other fellowship programs in the future, um, which are shorter, which will be a larger cohort of people. So um, it's certainly not the only way in which you can engage with us. Uh, and you know, it might be that that people do um, the one year fellowship, but they also carry on and do other shorter fellowships uh, following that. So the, there are definitely different ways to engage with us. Well, okay, one final question then, uh, and then I think we'll have to close up, but what 
are the selection criteria for being accepted onto the fellowship? What are you looking for? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so I don't want to don't want to give too much away, um, but you'll probably be able to glean quite a lot from uh, the session so far. It's difficult to say what makes an application particularly special, um, but the things we're looking for uh, can be described described, I suppose, in quite uh, broad terms. We are looking for people who think for themselves, who think in perhaps unexpected ways, uh, people who have political interests, but not just narrow uh, Westminster uh, politics interest, people who are interested and curious uh, in acquiring knowledge and learning about themselves, um, learning, new, learning new things, pushing themselves, but also people who have um, a track record of uh, success and proactivity. So people who have created things, you know, started things, uh, built things, maybe it's community organizations or something you've done at university or whatever it might be. Um, we just want a sign that you are ambitious, that you're proactive, uh, no, ma no matter, I suppose, the, the life stage uh, that you're at. Um, that's probably enough for now. Um, but we do, so we do want to keep it quite open, really. So, um, but as I say, there are these, um, there are totally, you know, unique people, I suppose, who, who might not feel like they meet any of those criteria, uh, but they should definitely, nevertheless, still apply. Um, part of the the problem uh, that we've identified, at least with the British political system at the moment, uh, is that no one's going out and looking for talented individuals. Um, most of the major parties are relatively closed off and it can be hard to get your foot in the door. So what we're trying to do is, is to change that, to go out to people uh, who think that they can make a big difference, uh, who think that they are uh, the sort of person that could really influence public life in a major way, but maybe they've never been asked or the, or the current system um, of, uh, of how parties work puts them off. Um, but as I say, we're hoping to change that. Um, and so I'd simply encourage you, uh, whoever you are uh, on the call, if you are thinking of applying to the Civic Future Fellowship, please do, please do do that. Um, we do want as many applications uh, as we possibly can. Are we, Jack, are we allowed to answer one final question? Um, yeah, go for it. On the, whether there's an upper age limit oh, yeah. um, for the fellowship. Do you want to do that? Or uh, I? Go for it. Okay. Um, so we're aiming this at people who are early to mid career, but we've decided not to put a formal upper age limit on it because there are lots of people who've done really well in other areas, other sectors, and may want a career change or uh, you know just haven't had the time to really think about public life. Um, before. So we want to keep open the possibility of someone in their 40s uh, applying and being involved. And actually a bit of age diversity in our cohort would not be a bad thing. So so again, yeah. um, don't, don't let that put you off applying or being in touch with us. Um, you know, talent comes in all different forms and at different ages. So um, we're trying as much as possible um, to, to enable people to engage with us. Uh, Brill, right, thank you very much. Um, if you have sent in a question and we haven't had time to get around to it, um, then uh, I'm sorry, we will try to reply to as many of those questions as possible uh, over email over the next day or so. Um, but for now, thank you very much for uh, having joined uh, this uh, webinar and look forward to hopefully seeing your application.